I just want to say that I and my wife, Santa, have done a great deal of diving. We did seven years of scuba diving all over the world. And what we did was we followed up local accounts of underwater structures, fishermen, local divers, and we went where they took us. This is Nanmadol Ponape on the Isle de Ponape. You go a bit further underwater and you start finding structures underwater. Go a bit further still and you find this huge column underwater. This is at a depth of 27 meters. That column has been submerged for more than 13,000 years. Uh, and it compares very interestingly with this column, if you see on the left, the submerged column at Namadol, on the right, this column from Tinian, the island of Tinian, uh, also in that region of the Pacific. I wonder if the megaliths of Tinian have been misstated. That, what we're looking at here, and I apologize to listeners who are listening and not watching, but what we're looking at here are my fins uh, disappearing uh, into a tunnel. And that tunnel uh, looks to me, uh, this is in Japan, by the way, off the island of Yonaguni. That tunnel looks to me uh, very man-made, particularly when I get inside it and find two, on each side, two big megaliths piled one on top of the other. Uh, and then when you come to the end of the tunnel, you see ahead of you these two massive megalithic blocks um, directly in view from the tunnel. Uh, that's a shot that Santa took of me diving beside those megalithic blocks just to give you a sense of the scale of them. They're enormous. No, they did not fall from a cliff above. There is no cliff above. Uh, and there's the, there in context, we're looking at a huge rocky outcrop with these two megalithic blocks on the side. But let's go round to the right of that rocky outcrop and we find a rock-hewn area uh, with steps. And those steps... Uh, Archaeologists tend to argue this is all completely natural. I have done more than 200 dives at Yonaguni. Santa and I risked our lives. We are not dilettantes. We are in this out of conviction. We're in this out of passion for our subject. We've done more than 200 dives at Yonaguni. I've been hands-on with this structure and all the other structures around it, and I am absolutely confident that we're looking at a rock-hewn structure, a natural rock face that was cut and shaped by human beings. Uh, here at Kerama, we're looking at a stone circle underwater, depth 30 plus meters, 32 meters, I think, been submerged again for more than 13,000 years. Um, there I'm videoing for scale. You can see somebody down that, beside that central megalith. Flint, do you think nature made that? I see no evidence of it being man-made, if that's what you're saying. You, you, you see no evidence of that being man-made. You see a no. central upright. You see upright surrounding it. You see the Outer curve, the inner curve of the outer megalith matching the outer curve of the central megalith. And to you, that's, that's not even interesting? I mean, even the photos you were showing of Yonaguni showed a lot of natural fractures along straight lines. And so I think that it's really easy to confuse what can happen naturally and geologically with something that looks kind of anthropogenic. But this does not look man-made to me. It does not look like anything I've ever seen. Well, that's interesting because I took a geologist diving there, Wolf Witchman. Um, uh, he's very skeptical. He, he was skeptical about Yonaguni, but he did confess after we came up from the dive at Kerama, that there's no way, in his opinion, that this could have been made by, by nature. This is a rock wall um, off uh, Taiwan. Uh, again, Santa and I went diving there. That's a local diver called Steve Shear. Uh, he's showing us this rock wall. Uh, we can get in close to it. We can see a sort of pediment in front of it. And if you get up close, you can see that it is actually made of individual blocks uh, put together. Uh, let's go to India, southeast coast of India. Uh, my wife, Santha, uh, was born in Malaysia, but uh, she's of Tamil, South Indian origin. So we had a great advantage uh, in South India in talking to local fishermen and divers because Santha speaks the Tamil language fluently. Uh, and we had asked them, are there any structures underwater off here? And they said, you bet there are. There are there's a whole city underwater off here. And we've complained to the government about it because we keep catching our nets on it. And fishermen have to go down and sometimes they die trying to free, free the nets. We'd like the whole thing cleared away. So we said, would you, would you take us out there and show us? Um, and it took some time to put it together. This was an expedition with the Scientific Exploration Society in Britain that I put together. As you can see, it's a very low-tech expedition. Um, but when we got out there, come on, Flint, tell me these are man-made. Uh, tell me these are natural blocks. <laughs> that is a very blurry picture, Graham. Well, tell, me it's a tell me that they're natural blocks. Tell me I cannot tell for sure from with these photos. Okay. T t there I'm putting my diving knife between two blocks. Things look weird in nature sometimes, and I'm not an expert. And so I look at that, and I'm like, 
That's blurry. It's green. It's odd. Yeah, it's odd. Maybe if you were there physically, you would have a different impression of it. Maybe it would look more like a, a stone wall. But Yanaguni to me b- blows me away. The this blows me away. But the other image blows me away of the the curved front of that feature, and what so, looks like steps to the right of it. So there's that tunnel. That's that crazy too. That's crazy too because the the lines line up. It looks like two blocks were cut and placed on each side. And there seems like a very clear passageway in between them. Especially since at the end of the passageway, you're f- confronted by this. This is what you look at. These are crazy. Like, it, if these are natural formations, they are so bizarre that you have enormous straight lines and right angles that look like they were cut. And not just straight on one side, straight on all sides. Do you mind going? Yeah. So look at this slide. You can see even to the right of those two blocks that the, what... Graham is calling blocks. You can see these sort of straight angles that are made. You can see another a, a vertical one to the left of them right, as well. So how do you think they were placed in that manner? Well, I don't know if they were placed. I think so. This you think is it's where possible that they just broke off at some point in history and landed like that? I think again, were, this is compelling to me, but not as compelling as the other one. Show me the other one with the the front curved surface. This notice that this looks crazy. Like this, the whole thing looks crazy. The steps look crazy. The 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 fact that it's all this one uniform flat line switch to my computer to show you these yeah some of these look bizarre nature sometimes looks bizarre though i mean right. you know i, I if if I, I'm, I'm assuming that people have investigated this like geologists and stuff from yeah, what masaki, i remember reading. professor masaki kimura um, has investigated it and he's uh, published extensively on it and he's ab- he's a geologist he's absolutely convinced that Yonaguni has been worked extensively by human hands and have another geologist like Robert Schock suggested that it's not yeah I took Robert there um, his initial impression was that it was uh, that it was man-made later he changed his view that's fine he did uh, three dives there but I mean, I don't know. I've seen a lot of crazy natural stuff, and I see nothing here that, to me, reminds me of human architecture, and I've seen human architecture all over the world. 